Hi, everybody. So tonight we're back to talk about the um, second half of our immune system conversation, and we're going to look at the acquired immune response. In the last lecture, we did innate immunity, and these were um, responses to foreign invaders or pathogens or antigens that were very generalized responses. The acquired immune response is very specific. It's very slow. I mean, it takes a while to ramp this thing up. Once we ramp it up, it's not messing around, and it, we can do some serious damage with the acquired immune response. But it does take us a while to do it. The acquired immune response has memory. It remembers if it has been exposed to a pathogen, a specific pathogen before. And uh, because of that, you often actually don't get a condition twice. Sometimes the pathogen will mutate, and, and so you think you're getting a cold again and again. This is the same cold. I thought I can't get the same disease twice. But the fact is it's mutated and it's a different cold. So really every cold you've ever gotten is a different critter that is invading you because you are um, saving up information about all the pathogens that have infected you, and you are ready to respond with the acquired immune response quickly and efficiently if you get infected again. The acquired immune response is mediated by lymphocytes. Now, we had um, one flavor of lymphocyte in the innate immune response, and that was the um, natural killer cells. But those guys make up just 2% of all lymphocytes, and everybody else is involved in acquired. All the other lymphocytes are involved in the acquired immune response. So our two main, um, we actually have two, just like we had two categories of uh, immune system, acquired and innate, we have two categories of acquired immunity. Um, we have the humoral immune response, and we have the cell-mediated immune response. And these are like branches of acquired immunity. They have things in common. Ultimately, I actually have that homeostasis is the last item on our list, but I think I'm going to add one more because um, I think we're going to have to have one place where we, like, go through the whole thing and, and do a big, huge review of, of the whole process so we can um, compare and contrast these two systems effectively. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at um, three sections, three factors that where we're going to look at our two branches side by side. So we're going to look at the lymphocytes, and we're going to compare the lymphocytes that are involved in the humoral immune response to the lymphocytes that are involved in the cell-mediated response. Then we're going to look at how the lymphocytes are um, educated, how they go through their maturation process. They do go to school, and not very many of them graduate. So we'll look at, we'll compare and contrast the way that um, our two types of lymphocytes are um, sent to school. And then we have to talk about MHC again. We talked about MHC1 in the last lecture. We talked about how it was um, present on almost all cells in, except for uh, red blood cells. In this section, we're going to talk about the role that MHC2 carrying cells play in this whole process and then we'll dive in. After we've got all those, like, general tools, then we'll dive in and look at each branch individually. I'd like to probably do a summary of all of it, and then we'll look at how the immune system relates to homeostasis. So um, it, it's a big, dense amount of content, and uh, why don't we get started then? I.